I know, I know, we have to still quilt the freedom quilt together and we're gonna get there, just not today. Today is video, we're gonna finish out the step-by-step -step process for all of you out there with the wonderful So Colorful kit. This is a wonderful patchwork quilt. I'm dying to show you how to make block number two. Let's get started. That's right, we are doing a patchwork quilt, so we are back over on the patchwork side of the set, AKA my old bedroom. I'm so glad you are here. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. I'm the host of Making It Fun, and I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how we make the second block. There are two blocks that are used to make this awesome patchwork quilt. Now, if you're just brand new here and you haven't seen any of the other videos, there are plenty I've already done about the So Colorful program. The entire program was developed by my dear friend, Susan Emery to help the quilt shops have a fantastic tool to help all of you learn more and more about color theory. Hey, I've been doing a lot of color theory study as well, and I am loving what I'm learning and having a blast, and I think my quilts are having more and more impact as I go due to what I'm learning from this actual So Colorful program. So let's back up a step. In this super cool box that you can find at your local quilt shops, the So Colorful box that you see here has the panel that you see here, and this panel is a project that you can make for yourself as well. It has the cotton couture fabric, which is our high-density solid cottons from Michael Miller. High-density means they've got a tighter thread, that means they're gonna be awesome for fused applique. That's right, raw edge applique, and in the box, you get all of the pieces and they are pre-fused and laser cut for you, so you're just gonna peel them and stick them to the panel that's in the box as well. All of the information's come in the booklet, the So Colorful booklet and instruction manual, also in the box as well. And the beginning of the book is gonna dive into information on color theory to help us all learn to be better colorists, better quilters, using our color as we go. The centerfold has the instructions. Again, we've been over all of this before, but what I really am excited about is the back of the book as a bonus has the instructions to make this awesome patchwork quilt. The only other place to get the instructions for this project are in the actual quilt kit. That's right, Michael Miller made for all the local quilt shops and the online quilt shops out there. The fantastic So Colorful Patchwork, not the panel, but the Patchwork Quilt. That's this right here. So you can also purchase this as a kit with all of the beautiful uh, white cotton couture and all of the pieces you need, the binding, all of that kind of stuff, and you can make it that way as well. I really want to support the local quilt shops and their ability to promote this product. So I'm going to walk you through the steps, but I'm going to leave out a couple of key pieces of information like the sizes and the color locations so that you will go out and treat yourself to this wonderful program, the So Colorful program. Anyways, enough information. Let's dive in. I did a video recently where I showed you one of the two blocks, and this is the pinwheel version of the block. So it's got the pinwheel in the center, and then we have a couple of other units that go around this block and we're gonna use those same units in creating the next block. If you're brand new to quilting, let's go over a little bit of vocabulary if we can as well, because we should, right? So at any rate, the first block in the instructions or the first unit in the instructions we make are what are called half square triangles. So it's a square and half of it is a colored triangle and you can do all kinds of different things with this and it's an incredible unit. As a matter of fact, I've got tons and tons of videos only using these units to make projects, super simple. Now, in order to make these today, I am going to go ahead and utilize two squares. I'm gonna use a square of the background color, that's the bright white that we're using uh, if you're following the instructions. And then you'll also have the information on how many pieces to cut here of your color fabrics and you'll be doing lots and lots of colors. I've already drawn a line diagonally from corner to corner with a Sharpie marker. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lay these two solid fabrics right sides together. Yeah, think about that. We're gonna go over to the sewing machine. Oh, this I really should point out after telling jokes, right? Distracting you. We're going to use this drawn line two different ways in today's video. So I'm gonna to try to be very clear how we're doing this. We're gonna make two half square triangles right now out of this one set of squares. So this is a guideline, not a sewing line. As I go over to my sewing machine, I'm actually gonna lay that quarter inch seam guide right on top of that guideline now. And now as I begin to stitch, I'm actually sewing a quarter inch away from the center line. And I'm gonna come all the way down here, and you've probably seen this a million times. No trick that I've created, that's for sure. Onto the other side, I'm gonna relocate so that that 
seam guide is again right on the guide line, that drawn line I just created down the center there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go through here. And we have effectively created two half square triangles now. With that, I want you to protect your hands and your work you've just done. So let's go ahead and take a moment with a ruler. You could do this a little sloppy if you wanted to, but I don't want you to do it that way. We're just going to cut down through these here. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our iron and we're going to press into the color side of the fabric, not the white background fabric. The reason we do that, you've probably heard the statement before, press to the dark side when possible. That just really helps prevent you being able to see the seam allowance behind like the white fabric. And I've actually got an example here I can show you in a moment. Now, the next thing we're gonna do with our half square triangles, that we, we started bigger than we needed. We're gonna trim these down to three and a half. I'll at least tell you that much. We'll have a little fun. See how much you can guess as you go along. Those of you who like to do things your own way. Guilty, I got through high school that way. All right, so here, if you've never seen how to trim down on these blocks, they're a little bit bigger than we need right now. Again, we need them three and a half. So I'm gonna first find the diagonal, the 45 line on my ruler, and I'm gonna push it so that my three and a half mark down here has got a little bit of wiggle room. Then I'm just gonna shave here, and I'm actually gonna come back here and shave. Oop, let's slow down, make sure that's all locked in. And I'm looking again, locked in on that diagonal line. Now what I was gonna say is I'm gonna shave backwards this way, because I don't ever like to start at the corner when possible on my ruler. It's a great way to dull your blade and nick your ruler. Now that I've got that first cut made perfect, now I line up first the diagonal, and then I find that my point back here, that the three and a half mark, is gonna be true, and now as I go ahead and do this, and this, I've got a little shave off and a perfect three and a half inch half square triangle, and I'm just gonna basically use the two of these that I make from each of the units you see here. I've got a little yellow, I've got a little orange going right now, and the cool thing about the way that this project is colorized is it is also a color wheel in the patchwork. So the colors are gonna go from the primaries into the secondaries into the tertiaries. Yeah, I got it right. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna teach you how to colorize that in the pattern. What I personally did today is I grabbed the scraps that were left over from when I helped make the quilts originally. And so these might not be exactly the color layouts, but it's just gonna help you understand the sewing process. Like this, this is your video version of the book you already have because you already got the box from your local quilt shop. See how this works? Okay, fantastic. So I'm just gonna set these half square triangle units aside for a little while. We're gonna need four of them to complete each of the block number twos as we get there. Okay, in the instructions, the next block we're gonna make is the center of the block or the center of the unit we're doing. And this one is going to be called a square in a square. I am now starting with a very large background square. And I have four more of these squares that I'm gonna add in happen to be all of the same color here. Most of the pattern is gonna ask you to do it that way as well. I've also drawn a diagonal line on all of these, and now this line is actually going to be a sewing line, not a guideline like we just did. So I'm gonna lay this here on the corner, making sure that the outside edges match up almost better. And then I'm gonna come over here, and as I go in to do my quarter inch seam allowance now, I'm actually looking through the presser foot, I can see that drawn line, and I'm just gonna let the foot and the needle and everything just do the work right through here. And the cool thing about this is you can do one side and then you can do the opposite side before you do a little bit of trimming and move on. So let's go ahead and just while we're working here at our sewing table, I'm just gonna line these back up again, watching that outside edge more than anything. And I'm gonna do the exact same sewing right down that drawn line. Before we can go to the ironing board though, we do need to trim these off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna protect the work again, we're gonna protect our hand. And I've got a quarter inch on top of the threads I just stitched down there. And I'm gonna trim off the outside corner and the outside corner on this side as well. Now, why is that important? You might be thinking, oh, hey, slow down. That might be important to you because as we press these open now, and I'm gonna press again into that dark fabric, dark fabric here, 
repair the corner I folded underneath a moment ago. And what this has done is it's given us the opportunity here to, when we sew through, we're going to be able to catch these edges and give ourselves some very nice crisp stitch points. So what I'm going to do now is I, pr I remember, I cut the scraps off, pressed them open, and now I can come back in and I can sew down these lines here. And again, this is going to be a stitch line. So needle right on top of the ink there, right through, and efficiency says we should do the same as we did last time. So we're just going to go ahead and drop that down there as well, stitch on the drawn line. Back to our cutting surface, protecting our quarter inch seam allowance with the ruler, trim, store that for later, trim, and actually they're pretty small. Don't store those for later. I have other videos where we do save them for later because we're doing lots of them and we've got some fun tricks. But right now, let's just go ahead and take a moment and press this out. Awesome. And it does look pretty good if I say so myself. Look at that. That is our square in a square unit. You'll be making several of those in different colors as you go through the patchwork process for your color wheel quilt there from the So Colorful program. So I'm gonna set one of these aside as I finish out building the rest of the units. And the rest of the units, we're gonna need four of these, and these are called flying geese. So basically it's gonna be a rectangle with two of these triangles, and they're basically done the same way we just did this, but I'll walk you through it anyways. So I've already made the three, I've got the fourth one to do here. So this rectangle and these squares are gonna be stitched on. And again, this is gonna now be a stitched line. Hopefully you can see that diagonal line I've already drawn on there. Lining up all of these outside edges here, all three of those. And now as I come over to the machine, lowering the presser foot again, and again, I'm gonna sew right through the drawn line. And like our square in a square center, I wanna do the same process of trimming then pressing and then adding on the next piece because that's way I get my super crisp, nice little stitch points there. Now on these units, I'm technically pressing into the lighter side. I just folded the white fabric over and I pressed into it. And I don't know that you can see that bleed through. You have to look very closely, but that's what I was saying earlier. It can happen, but once all the thread for quilting and everything comes in, you're not gonna have any problems. It's gonna be wonderful. Okay, now I do need you to pay attention real closely here because we don't want to sew this on the wrong way. And you certainly don't want to cut it if you've sewed it on the wrong way or you'll start everything over on this unit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make ourselves this triangle you see here by making sure that this line comes up and then the drawn line comes back down, forming that V shape like this, looking at all three outside edges, all nice and lined up here. And I've both started from the corner in the past and up here in the top, it all works about the same because I've got a nice little sewing machine here and it's rolling through nice, simple, slow, easy. Oops, almost forgot to press, or excuse me, almost forgot to trim myself. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this is cleaned off there like that. And now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just press this up. And we now have all of the units we need to block, build the second block. I think they actually refer to it as A and B blocks versus one and two, like I've been calling them. But what we're gonna now do is we're gonna come back to our square in a square, and we're gonna lay these out. Because I'm playing with different colors, we can kind of have some fun here. Now, the way this is gonna finish off, if I'm correct, I wanna make sure I'm looking at this correct here. So that's that square in the square right there. So out of that point is going to come the next color, the V shape like this, okay? So in the project itself, we're kind of often working from the lighters to the darker. So you'll often see in these other units out here, different colors than your same colors you found in the center. That's the way we can transition from color to color.
So now what I would like to do is over here on this darker side, this block's gonna lay in here like this. I believe I'm seeing that correctly, yes. And over here maybe on this lighter side, I wanna have here and here. and here and here to go ahead and start to shift the color throughout the rest of the patchwork. So we still need to assemble all of these units and the easiest way to do this is really gonna be, go ahead and slide these out of the way and slide these out of the way for now. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a moment, I'm gonna fold this over here and I'm gonna sew this line down but I am using this seam and that center seam right here to help match it up and keep everything nice and accurate. And just like earlier, when you were making your square in the square center, you can actually sew on one side and then sew on the other. Just make sure as you bring them over that you know that those points are lining up correctly. And you have all the orientation as needed there. Take a moment right now and I'm gonna press these outward or pressing from the center into the flying geese units. Okay, and let's just bring that right back into location so we can keep track of what we're doing and where we're at. And that was the way I had it a moment ago. Okay, now I'm just gonna put these half square triangles onto the outside edges of these last two um, flying geese units. You can even chain piece them or sew one after the other if you like. What I'm noticing is that basically the white fabric of the background fabric is forming another triangle right here. So that's how my eyes are gonna keep everything in check as I go through. Now I can come out here, snip this one off. Now this was my bottom unit. Correct, so that was there like this. This one over here, that forms that triangle, so I'm gonna grab that, rotate my work. Same thing from up here, correct. Make sure that your white forms a triangle, really easy. And that just saved a little bit of thread and a little bit of time and a little bit of knotting and all that. Really. And now because on this one we pressed away from center, on these ones we're actually gonna press into center. So by putting my um, small half square triangle on the ironing surface, pressing into the flying geese, and when I get to the other side, I'm gonna flip it and do the same. That's gonna make the seams go in an opposite direction. We also call that nesting. Okay, and then that's gonna go in right like that. So while I have it accurate, I'm just gonna flip it over. So on this long edge here. And now I'm gonna take the moment, I'm just kind of lining up these seam allowances at every unit or union, I should say. That helps keep things accurate, if that's important to you. Then as I'm about halfway through, I realign the back edge, checking that last seam here, checking my corner. And here we go, friends. Let's take a quick moment to press it so we can enjoy the quality of our work here. 
A very fun, very easy block. And again, this just randomly colorized or maybe a two color quilt also could be a fantastic way. If you're brand new to quilting, you just learn how to make a whole block that does a lot of fun stuff for you, which is really what quilting is all about, right? Now this block and this block, I'm certainly hoping are gonna be the same size and they are. And that's the way the entire So Colorful Patchwork color wheel quilt goes together using these two different blocks. I think that's B and A or A and B or one and two. Either way, we've got videos on both of them, how you construct them following the instructions from the So Colorful book that you get out of the So Colorful panel box or the wonderful kit that's available in all of your local quilt shops, whether you're shopping right now online, locally, curbside, however it goes, we are so glad you're with us. We are so glad you're quilting and being creative, of course, Please stay safe. We will see you very, very soon with another great tutorial right here at Make It. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.